So while browsing around on eBay, I saw this uh, 18650 12 volt battery case and, and, and holder, and I ordered a couple. And um, this is an interesting uh, case with a little bit of potential. Um, if we open this up, you can see this is, this is a, uh, it, it's just a case an empty case and, but it's to take the same form factor as like a sealed lead acid battery for that you would use in maybe a UPS or in uh, 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 an alarm system or maybe as like a backup for your driveway gate or something like that it's to take the same form factor as a, a 12 volt um, AGM battery um, it comes with these custom 86, 18650 holders that fit exactly in there and uh, you just you kind of build your own um, battery um, this holder it's uh, a three by seven so you could either do a 3p 7s battery that would make it a 24 volt battery or you can do a 3s by 7p battery that would make it a 12 volt battery um and uh you know you could also actually stack multiple the multiple of these together to get other voltage configurations but um i think i'm going to build a, a 12 volt battery and uh, i'll do that in a second now looking at the back of this i think these hold this holder was designed for uh soldering uh sorry not soldering for um spot welding you can see it's got these little let me bring this up and so you can see it's got these little indentations um, on top and I think this is intended for nickel strip to sit in between these indentations um, so I think this is intended for spot welding I am going to build two versions of this battery I have a spot welder on order and and I will build a spot welded version using nickel strip but um, I am going to build a solder version the reason I'm building a solder version is anybody with basic um, um, you know, electrical knowledge knows how to solder. Not everyone has spot welders available at their discretion. You really have to be big into 18650s to have a, have a spot welder available. Um, but anybody can do a little bit of soldering and this doesn't even need special wiring because, you know, look at this based on the size of these terminals and stuff like that at most this is going to be a 10 20 amp pack we can build this with pretty small gauge wire a little bit of solder um i think we'll be able to uh, build a pretty nice little battery i will warn you there is very little space in this case first of all these things fit exact in there and additionally there isn't very much um height um, play once you once you insert the battery in there there's not a lot of space on top so we will need to keep our soldering and our bus bars and everything pretty pretty low to the top so that we don't eat up too much space you will also need a BMS um, Sorry, I had to go find the BMSs. So um, I looked for a very small and compact BMS and I found these PCB boards. And these are 10 amp BMSs um, just on a breakaway BMS, uh, breakaway PCB. Um, but this is a 10 amp BMS, which is perfect for a battery like this. Um, you would never probably need to draw more than 10 amps from something this size. Um, and then the nice thing is because of its size, we can fit it, um, you know, probably on the side here um, and not, um, um, uh, you know, not run into interference with the case. I think, I think there is enough space on either the side or on the, this side to fit this little BMS in. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, I'm going to solder this battery up and then I am also going to uh, put this little BMS on it and uh, build myself a 12 volt battery.
Okay, I if my uh, okay if my time lapse uh, camera worked, you just saw me soldering this battery. This battery is now pretty much finished. Um, I have the BMS on the side. I have again this is seven in parallel, and then they are joined in three in series. I am using 28 gauge fuse wire. Let's come up and if you can see that it's 28 gauge fuse wire that uh, joins each each row of seven they're joined over with 28 gauge fuse wire i do insert a, a little bus bar across all the batteries it helps to keep them in balance so that you're not just joining one battery to one battery you're joining a bank of batteries to a bank of batteries by having a common bus bar um, and then that bus bar also provides a nice place to tap power um, for the balance leads that run to the bms um, the bms um, Again, this is a 10 amp capable BMS. I've actually wired it with relatively thin gauge wire just because I'm not sure that this little BMS could take 10 amps. And I'm not trying to hit this harder than 10 amps. Um, again, this is in a 12 volt configuration at 10 amps. That's a little over 100 watts. That's really not that big of a battery. So, um, uh, you know, this gauge wire should be fine and this is a this this will make a hell of a you know you, you know hell of a battery for a usb charger or something like that great for if you go camping or whatever i mean you, here you you know here you got a whole bunch of 18650s effectively each one of these can recharge your phone assuming no inefficiencies so you know you got 21 batteries here you could put, you know if you went camping or whatever this could potentially recharge your phone 21 times so Anyway, here's the so here's the battery. Let's stuff it in a case and see how this goes. Um, I guess I'm looking at these. I thought I was gonna use a uh, thought I was gonna use a um, you know one of these or something to connect to this. But now that I'm looking at it, thinking I just need to solder onto this. These look more like solder. Uh, these look more like solder blocks than. Um, than the kind that you use a, a connection on. So I am, I'll just solder right onto them. Take me 10 seconds. Now let's split the wire, make sure we get our polarity right. Stand that up right there. Flow a little bit of solder. Done, solder is flowed. Strip the wire. Now do be careful at this stage, technically these leads are live. All right, so negative, yep, onto negative. Oh, didn't take, let's reflow it. Okay, it's on. Okay, positive onto positive. And now we can insert this. Make sure none of the wires get caught. Yep, that fits. Let's make sure we gotta be careful that we don't touch any leads. But there we go. That is done. Let's check the let's check the voltage, yeah. I haven't checked it yet. Hope I don't look like an ass. Let's see here. Uh And of course, I'm actually currently not getting, I don't know if you can see that, I am currently not actually getting a reading, which means I screwed up something. Okay, after doing a bit of testing, I definitely think this BMS is faulty. Um, I've done some testing on it and yeah, it, it has voltage at all the balance leads, but no, uh, it does not, there's no voltage on the output. So I think this is faulty. Um, so for now, I just wired the battery directly to the leads and we have 12.47 volts. So uh, yeah, the 12 volt battery is complete. I do recommend a BMS and I will be ordering a replacement BMS for this BMS. Um, you really shouldn't run lithium batteries without a BMS. But uh, yeah, if you want to uh, build yourself a nice little self-contained uh, 12 volt battery, yeah, I, uh, I like these cases. 
I like the holders, the holders are, are good. Um, there's enough space to do some soldering. Just remember this is not gonna be super high powered. Um, you know, 10, 20 amps is probably the max you should pull from this. And even, and then you gotta size your wiring accordingly. So uh, yeah, but uh, I do think this is a, a nice form factor and it turns your lithiums into a nice um, portable unit that you can take with you for, you know, whatever project you need it for.